welcome to the Pearls and Polish podcast. My name is Rachel and I'm your host coming to you from just outside Sacramento, California. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. This is my little corner of the internet where I talk about knitting, different projects I'm working on, books I'm reading, movies I'm watching, um, and just kind of life. So welcome. Um, I know this episode isn't coming out on like a regular day. Um, I recorded an episode last week and when I went to edit it, I was just having so many issues with the camera and the sound. It was just a mess. So it just seemed like a better idea to try again. So we're going to do episode 31 again. Um, so anyways, welcome. I'm so excited to spend some time with you. Let's get started with some finished objects. I have two to show you and they are not socks. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is my garter snake cowl. Let's see, which way does it go? It goes this way. Okay. So this is a brioche cowl. And, um, if you're not familiar with brioche, it's kind of like a rib stitch, but it's reversible. So it looks like this on one side. And when you turn it inside out, it looks like that. So your options for what, how you want to wear it are just kind of endless. Um, whenever I do brioche, there's definitely a side I prefer more to the other. Um, but this is just a great beginner friendly pattern if you're new to brioche. So the great thing about this project is because there's so much brioche, you do have a lot of chances to learn how to fix your mistakes. Um, for brioche, I'm still not as well versed to be able to like just fix the one mistake i have to take all the stitches apart to where my mistake is fix it and then continue um, whereas like with a knit stitch or a purl stitch i can easily just take apart one little section and then fix it um, not feeling as confident with that with brioche but anyways the nice thing about this pattern is that you also have this garter stitch panel. So you do have some decreases. It's not really a decrease because you're not getting smaller, um, but you're creating this like V shape. So you have the V shape on this side. Uh, let me raise it up a little bit. There we go. But then you also have this V shape on this side, um, like an inverted V. So that is really nice. Um, and it also gives you some options about how you want to wear it. Now this particular pattern is called the garter snake cowl. I can never remember how to pronounce the designer's name correctly. So her, she's going to be linked down below. Uh, she has several brioche patterns in multiple yarn weights. So if you want to do this pattern in a DK, she has a pattern for that. Um, she has this little like bandana thing. That's super cute in like fingering and DK and I think worsted. She has lots of hat patterns. So really lovely, um, super easy to follow. She has, I think, three kids and they're super cute. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Um, one of the modifications I did make to this pattern is I did not take this like um, garter stitch higher. So the original pattern has like a very long panel of garter stitch. I'm not a particularly large person um, and I don't have like a ton of space between like my neck area. So I didn't want a ton of fabric around my neck. Um, also the area I live in does not typically get snow. So we don't have super cold winters. Um, we get cold, but not cold to the point where like I need to cover up or I'll freeze. Um, so this is just the right amount of fabric for me to kind of keep this whole space warm, keep my like open chest area warm, um, but not be overpowering. So that's my first project that was done. Oh, I didn't talk about the yarn. The yarn is, it's a wool cashmere blend by, um, who's it by? <laughs> oh, Explore Knits Fiber Co. So EFK. Um, they're going to Rhinebeck this weekend. I think it's this weekend. I don't know. I'm on the West Coast. Um, but this is a two colors from her Into the Wild collection from a couple years ago. So this variegated colorway is called Vixen. Jeweled Vixen. That's it. It's Jeweled Vixen. And then the like tealish blue color that is there. Actually, let me flip it inside out. You'll be able to see that better. 
one second. So this teal blue color, um, that one is called Tide. Um, I don't think those colors will be coming back anytime soon. She does like a year of review, but I don't think those ones will be coming back. But she does wonderful work. Definitely go check her out. All right, my second project that is done is my Shadow Singer Shawl. Um, I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. It's between like a shawl and a cowl. Um, so I'm trying to just over pronunciate the owl sound. Um, but it's finished, so it's kind of massive. So this is the cowl part. Just like the other project I just showed you, it's a giant tube for your neck. But then it goes into these like wings. Um, and so there are a couple different configurations of how you wrap it up. Um, lovely pattern, lovely support from the designer. Her name is Jody. She's Worsted Wolves on Instagram. I'll tag her below. Um, but she had like a whole group on Ravelry where we could ask questions and submit requests and suggestions. And so it was one of those test knits where you just felt very supported as the test knitter versus like some test knits I've been in, the designer was just very strict of don't ask me questions, don't suggest any changes, just knit the pattern. Um, so, so this was a great community to be a part of. So anyways, this yarn that I picked out, I think turned out beautifully. Um, these are definitely colors I would wear on a regular basis. So I'm definitely gonna get some use out of this project. The yarn dyer is no longer dyeing yarn as far as I know. So that was kind of a bummer, but um, Still really excited I had these skeins to be able to do this project. So one of the things I did do is um, typically when I'm knitting with more than one skein, I will alternate rows. Um, and that's so you kind of get a nice blend of color. I tend to work mostly with hand dyed yarn. And even if they're in the same pan, they're going to turn out a little bit different from each other. So you kind of want to alternate skeins so you don't get what's called pooling. And I actually did get some pooling, even though it was alternating skeins. Let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, right here. So there is a very large chunk of like that copper color right in the middle. Um, and that's considered pooling, where it's doing that kind of striping, where it kind of goes to, I guess, my left and it probably would be your right on the screen. And then it zigzags in the other direction. Um, there are times where you want pooling or there are people who really like when their colors pull. I don't really care for it, um, but there's a time and place for that. So despite my best efforts, I had a little bit of pulling, but because it's kind of a long neck, it's gonna scrunch so you won't see it. When it came down to the wings, you did the wings one at a time and they're actually quite, long. Um, there's a lot of fabric there, but because you're wrapping it around your neck, it's totally fine. Um, so I had originally started alternating skeins for the wings. So I figured I'd alternate skeins for one wing and then I'd alternate skeins for the other wing. Um, but be because of the way that it was set up and there's like a slip stitch yarn over type thing, um, it was not working out. It was not sitting nice it wasn't looking cute so I ripped it back and I decided I'm gonna go against what my like instinct is and I'm gonna knit one wing with one skein and one wing with the other skein and the reason I felt comfortable doing that is because they're gonna be wrapped around my neck so you're not gonna be able to tell a ton of difference between one wing and the other and where one color starts and one stops um so yeah that's all done. I still need to take pictures of those, um, but those will be done and I'll have those posted on Instagram soon. So let's move into whips, works in progress. I have four that I'm working on right now. Let me grab them. So this time around, I have two sock whips and two blanket whips. I know that seems like a lot of just stuff going on, a lot of volume, but it's actually been pretty manageable. So. Like I've told you guys many times before, I'm doing my year of socks with Paisley Knits Yarn Club for the Gods. Um, I'm on my October colorway, and then I have three extra colorways that were added to the collection. So there's 15 colors total. Um, so I need to finish 
six pairs of socks to finish the collection by the end of the year. Totally doable. So I started my October socks and one of the extra colorways at the beginning of the month. Um, I have two finished socks, one from each color. <laughs> so this is the Hestia colorway and I am not typically a big fan of orange, but I really like this colorway. I feel like I say that every time. I'm not a fan of this color, but I like this one. Um, so the sock is done. This pattern is called the Vanilla Souffle Socks by, um, it's a yarn dyer. Her, name, her yarn dyer name is Yarn Cafe. And like I said, everything will be linked below. I don't remember her, like her real name. Um, but she had released this pattern as a free pattern at the beginning of COVID, which was super sweet of her. So this has been sitting in my queue for a, you know, a couple of years. So this seemed like a great yarn to kind of pair with that because there is some variegation of the color. I'll show you the back. That's going to give you a better idea of what the color looks kind of worked up. Um, but it was going to be able to handle a high texture. So um, this is a really interesting way to do texture. I haven't done it like this before. Um, I'm not going to like give away the pattern because I don't remember if it's still free or not. Uh, but check it out. It's a great pattern to have regardless. Um, the one thing I would suggest is that you do want to knit a little looser. Um, because of the way the texture is done, it is a little tight. Um, my mom is also knitting this pattern right now. And um, she's a looser knitter than I am. But it was pretty tight for her. So those socks are going to go to an aunt, one of my aunts. Um, I did try these on. And they were a little tight in the instep, but I think it'll be okay. I'm going to block them. You know, that kind of loosens things up. And I'm just going to be a little more conscientious in my second sock. So for the second sock, the cuff is done. Uh, I've been doing these during Taekwondo. Um, for this first sock, I was really good about doing like 20 rounds a day. Um, and that was just very manageable for me because like the first day was the cuff. The second day was the first third of the leg. You know, it took me three days to do the leg. Then heel flap and gusset. That took me like two days and then like two, three more days for the rest of the foot and the toe. So it was, a, I think, a little over a week of work. Um, so that was super manageable. I've not been following that same kind of like pattern with my second sock, um, mostly because I've been working on another project and I'll show that to you in just a second. But I will show you my other sock. So this is Hephaestus. This is one of these like extra colorways. And it is this like gorgeous coppery brown olives, some cream. I um, really like how this colorway turned out. Because this colorway has a little more color dimension, so a little more range of color, I wanted to go with a ribbed sock. Um, Sarah Opie, who's, I've done several of her sock patterns. She did like a seven days of sock, and then she did another collection called the seven days of rib sock. So I'm doing one of the rib sock patterns. Um, I don't remember what it's called, um, but it'll be linked below. So. When I started this sock, I just started with a two by two rib and then I picked the pattern. Well, her pattern had a one by one rib. And so I just kind of shuffled things around and it was fine. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the second sock so they look the same, but it's a nice, I have dog hair on this. <laughs> it's just a nice rib sock. Like there's not a whole ton to it. What does make it like different or kind of interesting um, is the heel. I try to do something new with every pair of socks, whether it's a different toe or a different heel or a different direction that I, you know, cast on or pattern. Don't care. Um, so this heel is a heel flap and gusset, pretty typical. However, this is an eye of partridge, but in reverse. So um, what does that mean? So the heels I typically do are heel flop and gusset and I do like a slip stitch heel. So like you slip, like you knit one and then you slip one. I guess it's a twisted slip stitch. 
But anyway, so you knit one, you slip a stitch, and so that just kind of creates some structure and some strength. Um, very nice straight lines, love it. For a par eye of partridge heel, you alternate rows about which stitch you're slipping. So you get kind of like a checkerboard pattern. Um, that's like the best way I can describe it. Well, in this one, you get, you do the same thing, but all your slip stitches are on the inside of the sock. And the outside of the sock has the like loops to it. So if I were to turn this sock around, which I wasn't planning on doing this, but I will now. So this is the inside of my sock. I have all those slip stitches. So the only difference is this is on the inside and this one's on the outside. Um, so I haven't done a sock like that before and I am pretty excited with how it's turning out. I think I'd like to try it again, um, but how I would normally knit my eye, or not my eye of partridge, my slip stitch heel. Um, but yeah, pretty self-explanatory. I have not started the second sock for that one. I think I'm gonna focus on the October sock and just like nail it out and then I'll do the other Hephaestus sock since this one technically doesn't have like a deadline. Um, the October sock has a deadline um, of like the last day of October. So they'll both be done by the end of the month, if not sooner, um, so no big deal. So. For 2022, yeah, 2022, I did the Year of Socks with Shop La Messerie and loved it. Great group of yarn dyers. You got like a huge surprise about what it was every month. And at the end of the month, or I'm sorry, at the end of the year, I wanted to do the Let me show it to you first. Okay, so this is like a throw blanket. So I'm gonna hold on to my needle so I don't lose anything. Um, but this is it. So I am alternating a light gray yarn and then whatever the color of the month was. And then I'm holding just a plain white undyed yarn throughout the entire blanket. So I did the gray and then January's color, which was Zeus and then gray, and then February, which is Dionysus, gray, March was Poseidon, and then April was Demeter. So a couple things. One, the, pa the pattern was originally written for a 24 mini skein, like a, like a yarn advent. Um, since this is not an advent, I'm only gonna have 15 colors, hence the blocks of gray between colorways. Now that I have done, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like color blocks, um, I kinda wish I had gone with a darker color. I thought there was gonna be more darker colors in the Yarn Club for the Gods collection. Did I pull them all out and look at them all together? before I purchased all this little gray yarn? No, I did not. Um, is it gonna bother me? Eh, it might, a little bit, but I have no intention of taking it apart and starting over. So it's it's just is what it is, and I am very happy with how it's turning out so far. Um, so it's gonna be fine, and no one's gonna notice or care. So, um, in retrospect, probably should have done a darker gray between the two colors so I could get some more pop out of there, but it's fine. So I have been working on this specifically on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Saturdays we go to my parents' house and so I have this in a bag and I just take the whole bag with me to my parents' house um, because it is portable. It's not a giant blanket, it's, it's a lap throw. So very easy to work with. Um, 
And so I work on that all day Saturday and then I work on it on Sunday until I'm done with one gray section and then one month section. So I'm already a quarter of the way done. So I really think I'll be done with all the leftovers, like scraps that I currently have before I'm done with the rest of the socks for the collection. So it'll just be a quick add in the one color as I go and I should have a done finished blanket by the end of the year, but we'll see. I don't wanna like completely commit to that idea, but I'm kind of committing to that idea. So really enjoying that. I'm glad I started that now. I probably should have started it a little earlier, but that's fine. My last whip, um, it is currently in a box because it's starting to get big. Um, this is one of my forgotten whips. So let me show it to you first. Well, originally I learned how to crochet first before I learned how to knit when I was a kid. Um, and then once I really learned how to knit and I got really good at it, I could do it a lot faster. But I had all these little yarn scraps and so, and I had bought some DK light gray yarn for a sweater project that didn't end up working out. So I decided I was gonna hold this like light gray. It's Swish DK by Knit Picks. It's their colorway Dub Heather with um, my scraps of finger gray weight yarn. So I started this project and then I just kind of stopped. Um, I was making these magic knot balls. And so like anything like three yardage or so. I know I call this the 10 gram blanket, but these pieces are definitely smaller than 10 grams. Um, and so I hold them together and I crochet these like granny squares. So I was working on this for a while and then I stopped and now I was like, okay, I've got that fire under me. I want to get some stuff done. I want to get stuff cleared out. So I've been working on this and I got a little obsessive. Typical. <laughs> so I've been working on this almost nonstop, like every day. I'm definitely working on this. This has been getting more time than my socks. Um, however, this is my last little ball of magic knots. Um, I made this like two days ago with, I went through all my scraps um, and pulled out all the smallest of the scraps and made another magic knot ball. So that's the last one. So my plan is to finish this magic knot ball and then put this away and work on some of the other forgotten whips. Um, I do have a couple yarn swaps coming up. Um, I do have like smaller leftover pieces from my cozy comfort throw that I'm gonna add in. So I'm gonna put this on pause, finish my other projects and then come back to this um, kind of sporadically when I have a good chunk of scraps. But this thing is getting massive. Um, it's starting to get kind of heavy. So I haven't measured it. I probably should. Um, I don't remember how big I originally made it or like, I think it might be a twin size, but this is going to be a big project, which I have a lot of <laughs> yarn scraps. So I will definitely not be short on supplies. Um, but this is definitely going to be a marathon and not a sprint. So this should take me like two days to get through all of this. And then it will sit in its box and just be stashed away for a little bit and then I can pull it out later and obsessively work about it then. All right, I've got one more thing to talk about um, before we move into like books and movies and stuff. So I got accepted to work on a test knit that's gonna last for about six months to a year. Um, I can't say a lot about the test knit. I can tell you is for a yarn designer that I really, not a yarn designer, a knitwear designer. I really love their patterns and that's about it. Um, I can't tell you what kind of patterns they are. I can't show you the patterns. I can show you the yarn before I use it, but that's all I can do. So for the next six months to a year until I can talk about the project, this giant project I'm part of, um, we're going to call this the Fight Club project because the first rule about Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. So the yarn for my first 
contribution to this project came in. Um, I got, I believe you pronounce it Surella? Sorella? I don't know. Anyways, Sorella, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Um, I've got this. This is her worsted weight yarn. So it's 100% superwash merino, 218 yards, 100 grams. This colorway is called Charlotte. Um, so that came in the mail yesterday. And then when I was looking at the pattern, I realized I'm gonna need two skeins. So I just ordered the second skein. So I haven't started this project yet, but I did wanna share this colorway. Um, I think it's the most lovely, like dusty rose mauve color. Um, not necessarily a color I would like immediately go to or gravitate to. However, I did a color analysis. Um, so everyone has like a, a season, right? You have a, you're a spring or a winter or a autumn or a summer. So for the longest time, I thought I was a winter because I have dark hair and I'm a little lighter complexion right now, at least right now. In the summer, I can get pretty dark. Um, so I always thought like blacks are look awesome on me and whites look awesome on me and, uh, you know, dark colors, I'm a winter. And so um, I did a color analysis and it's through Curate Your Style. They're based out of London. Um, they do have an online service. And then they also have an in-person one. So I obviously I did the online one. So you send in f five pictures, right? You pick whatever package you're looking for. And then they have three different stylists look at it. And then they send you back a whole PDF on like, what is your season and what are your colors and colors that you should gravitate towards and colors you should avoid. Turns out I am a deep autumn. Um, so each season has three like color levels. So you have a deep or a dark autumn, a true autumn, and then a light autumn um, or a soft autumn. I think it's the other way it's called. So if you have like the circle, deep autumn is halfway between true autumn and light winter, which is why I always thought I was a winter. Turns out black and white are not colors that I should gravitate towards. Um, this color, however, was on like my approved list. Uh, of colors that I should wear or that would look good on me. So um, that has been helpful as far as looking at my yarn selections, like for my sweaters and saying like, oh yeah, this is a color that would look good on me versus, oh, this is a color that's gonna wash me out. Um, so I figured this first project would be a great step in that direction. Um, so if you want to check them out, definitely check them out. They do have a couple different levels of packages. They have like your clothes, like your colors. They have one for makeup. They have one for hair color. Um, and they have one for like body shape. So you know, like what styles to wear. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting. At least I find that interesting, but there's that. Um, moving on to books, I have like 45 minutes left of Anna Karenina. Um, I've put it off for like the last week. I am so over that book. It is long and I've gotten to the point where everyone's whining and I'm tired of the whining, but I am glad I read it. Uh, I could check that off my list. I don't know if I would read it again, um, but great book. I'm so glad I did the audiobook instead of like reading it. Um, but yeah, I just need to get those last 45 minutes done and then I can take it off of my audible. Um, but what's distracting me from that is I started A Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. I've read it so many times, but I just needed something kind of fluffy and comfort, like comfortable that I know so I could just kind of relax. Um, and not have to be like so emotionally committed to Anna Karenina. Um, for shows, I watched Only Murders in the Building. Um, I have this thing where if a new season comes out on a show, I have to watch all the past seasons first before I can watch the current one. I don't know why. Um, so I started over from season one, episode one, and I watched the whole thing through. Um, so really liked it. I really love that 
kind of trio of Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. Um, I think they work beautifully together. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. It's on Hulu. Um, and then I started The Magicians. Again, I, I was kind of in a slump. I needed something comfortable and familiar. Um, so I started The Magicians again. Uh, it's one of those things I can kind of have on the background while I'm doing other things so I don't have to focus so hard because I'm so familiar with the story. Um, and then life stuff, we're like almost done with the first trimester of school, <sighs> gearing up for the holidays. Um, we're already like making Thanksgiving plans with family and we're already thinking about like Christmas and planning Christmas gifts. Um, my husband bought like some little Lego sets for our kids for Christmas and then the catalog from Lego showed up at our house and obviously because we know our children so well my husband picked out a little set for our oldest and when she was looking through the catalog she immediately looked at that set and said oh I have birthday money left over for my birthday I want to buy this set which has already been purchased and is you know stashed away until December so we try to like play her off as far as like oh oh okay well maybe like we'll like make a list we'll see but she's like pretty adamant she really wants that set and we don't want to tell her like well we already bought it for you for christmas so you know the joys of having children <laughs> and them gearing up for christmas and not knowing that we're also gearing up for christmas um i started taekwondo lessons i know um my kids do taekwondo they've been doing it for my oldest has been doing it for two years. This is her second year. My youngest has done it for about a year. Um, they really enjoy it. So their studio gave away three months for adults, for adult lessons, and I won that. So I started lessons at the beginning of October and I thought I was in fairly good shape, but not so much. I am not you know, 16 anymore, where I bounce back like I used to. Oh man, I feel old. Um, but I'm very competitive. So like I commit, we were playing this like game and I like fully committed to the game, which was great. But then I got like a carpet burn on my foot. And there's a reminder of like the next morning when I couldn't get out of bed because I was so sore of like, oh yeah, I'm not, 16 anymore i'm 34 and so of course my camera battery dies just as i'm wrapping up this episode uh thanks for hanging out with me today um i really appreciate you spending a bit of your time with me um hope that you have an awesome week and i will see you guys for episode 32 <music>